I'm Lisa Lepke from ProWriting Aid, and it's editing week here at ProWriting Aid HQ. And like I said at yesterday's story edition, it's basically always editing week here at ProWriting Aid HQ. But um, usually we're focused on copy editing because that's where ProWriting Aid can have the biggest difference. Um, but there's a lot of editing. To, um, if you want to take your book from first draft to final manuscript, there are a lot of phases and part of that includes professional editing. So today we have Joelle Nordstrom with us and she is the founder of First Editing. Um, and with hundreds of successfully published writers and numerous best-selling authors and thousands of manuscripts self-published by academics and business authorities, Ellen, Joellen has a lot of inside editing knowledge and she is gonna share it all with us tonight. So hi Joellen, thanks for being here. Hi, thank you for having me. This is really exciting. I'm so glad we did this, especially after the London Book Fair. <laughs> I know, we were initially supposed to be presenting together at the London Book Fair and it was one of the first events that went down for coronavirus and there was a lot of toing and froing of will they cancel it, won't they, is anything going to happen with this COVID-19, who's ever heard of it? Mm. And now here we are. So this is good. This is us bringing the London Book Fair to you. So Joellen, I'm just going to pass over to you. Um, I know you've got a lot that you want to share with everybody and we've got a short time. So I'll be back in 20 minutes, 20, between 20 and 30 minutes. Um, and then I'll go through all the Q&A and um, yeah, I'm going to pass Excellent. over to you. Take it away. Oh, thank you so much. Well, let me just share my screen here. So thank you for having me today. This is very exciting. My name is Joellen. I am the founder and head editor. Uh, there we go. Are we going to move here? Oh, there we go. Okay, so we're going to go into navigating your editing journey today. And this is all based upon our book that we started to kind of explain that editing is a, an entire journey. It's not just simply something you do and then you're done. It's really a part of the whole adventure. You've been writing the book. And so this is part of understanding the next steps after you write done. And what I've done is I, I made a promise that I would try to help you answer some questions today. And so I wanted to lay those out. And ironically, it came out to exactly 10 which makes it very easy for us to go through those 10 steps. And hopefully you'll see what you need to do before, during, and after with editing so that you can be a successfully published author. So first we wanna talk about how to evaluate what your manuscript needs and how to get the best price and find qualified editors when you're getting into the editing process. You wanna determine where you are in your editing journey. So there is a process here and we'll discuss that quite a bit. So. The questions that I want to answer for you today is who can you trust for editing? What determines your editing price? And then of course, when should you start with an editor? That's a new question quite often. Uh, people don't know, is it too soon? Is it too late? Which editing services do you need? And again, that's a very important part is to determine exactly what you need because you don't need to go in all in if that's not necessary. And how can you find help? Where can you find that? And why is the professional editing necessary if you're going to publish or distribute or in any way share your writing? And lastly, how does editing help you reach your goals? So it all starts with self-editing and that's how we are connected to ProWriting Aid. We absolutely love what they do out there in terms of teaching and helping people to use their writing tools. So writing um, such as academic, nonfiction, fiction, that's what we specialize in, and business and copy. If you just simply insert this uh, tool or this uh, plug-in onto your, your writing, then it helps you all day. And what I find, and I use it, all of my editors use it. We are, you know, 20, 30 editors at any time using these. Um, it is a great tool to have in your uh, toolbox because it helps you become better and better daily. So again, we have Fictionary is also for story editing, and that's a fiction writing. And they help you basically with all your fiction to outline it and get onto that story arc. So we do work in conjunction with both of them, and I do recommend them. And that is great to do before you come into professional editing and do that. We do have a, a free ebook, so again, we'll post that for you. So take a look there. It's very easy to find, and it is called Your Editing Journey. So we're gonna use specific tasks and help you succeed with all of that. And these are, the, these are the methods and the tools and the patterns that all of the successfully 
published uh, authors use. So again, there is a pattern, there is an algorithm, there is a template to follow, and we will help you with, you know, hundreds of years of experience to help you understand what makes a engaging and uh, successful manuscript, it, be it in fiction, nonfiction, and uh, academic even, because it, they're all successful ways and templates and patterns that you should follow. So as we go on with that, let's get started with the 10 steps in your editing journey. Um, I hope that I don't speak too quickly or too slow here. So if, save your questions and we'll cover all those. I, I love talking about editing. It's very fun. And we've been doing this for a long time now. So the first step is how to evaluate what your manuscript really needs, because there's a lot of different things out there. So we want to ask yourself, do you need a copy edit, which is, you know, the basics of grammar, spelling, punctuation? Do you need a line edit? Basically uh, looking at the overall coherence and uh, validity from line to line and how it connects together to tell your, your stories? Or do you want a, a higher level content edit? This is also called a developmental structural or substantive edit. Uh, I believe yesterday you talked about story coaching and story editing, which is for the fiction. And you're going to have a developmental edit with nonfiction and you're going to have substantive edit when you go into academics. So again, we're not focusing on just one uh, type of writing here. It's, it's really trying to cover it all. So when you do this, you're gonna compare editing services and determine when each level is necessary. So if you're a developmental structural content editing, that's the higher level. That's when you're really looking at the overall perspective. Your line editing is after that, basically when you are making sure that you're, you're staying true, your voice is consistent, it's coherent, that you're expressing yourself in the best way possible. And copy editing is making you aware of your structural uh, challenges and what you need to overcome in your writing. So we're doing that. Developmental editing, for all of you who consider yourself panthers out there, meaning that you are flying by the seat of your pants and you are writing your book and by just the feeling of what motivates you and when the muse uh, gets you going. That's, uh, again, a good person to come in for developmental editing because they have written out of emotion without an outline or project. That doesn't exclude planners. Planners are also people who really appreciate developmental editing because it's nice when somebody comes in and shows you where you've done it well and where you need to put more uh, attention towards and to figure out how to make your entire uh, document, your entire manuscript, your entire story cohesive from the actual information and what you're trying to convey. And then of course, for everyone who has that question, is it any good? That is ideal developmental editing because is it any good? Well, let's look at it not from do I like it, but is it any good in terms of, is it going to successfully uh, engage your readers, whatever those readers may be, if they are, you know, if they want inspiration or motivation, if they want a really great engaging story, or if they're trying to learn something or they're trying to understand your theory, then again, these are all times when you wanna get into that substantive developmental editing, also known as story coaching or uh, content editing. The other type of editing that we have is line editing. And this is something that you do during your revisions. You have decided your story, you've developed your, your, um, your different scenes and your characters, you have your plot, you have your tension, you have all of this going on. So now you want to look at it and revise it. And that, this is when you do the back and forth. And revisions can be as many and I won't say as few, but definitely as many as you want. And uh, so you need to be aware of that, that it is a back and forth process. It's not linear. You don't finish one and graduate to the next, but you may spend time here uh, really digging in. And I find most authors really enjoy this, especially when you get fresh eyes and, and an editor in there who can help you uh, see things in a new perspective. And copy editing, I really want to emphasize that copy editing is the final edit. It is your absolute final edit before you go into formatting. So copy editing is when you bring it in, it's, it's grammar, spelling, punctuation. It is understanding what you have written and making sure it is structurally correct. 
Of course, then we also have proofreading, which is technically not editing. And it is, proofreading is something that is conducted after you have formatted your document. And it is basically looking again, a quick run through to make sure, you know, your editor or yourself didn't uh, make any mistakes and that the system, especially now with the electronic systems, when you're uploading your document onto different platforms, how it affects your overall layout, how it affects the overall uh, presentation of your book. So again, make sure that you proofread, never ever skip this because you always must look at it before you release it out into the world. So that is the first step. The second step is how to get the best price and how to find editors who you feel are qualified to work with you because it is a personal choice. It's not one size fits all. It is something that is a relationship. So you really need to, to think about that and decide how to get the best prices and find those qualified editors. The first part is to prepare. If you wanna save money, you need to edit in advance because the less work your uh, professional editor has to do, the better price you're going to receive. And editing is a large investment. It's probably the largest investment you will make on the actual production of your book. This is before you get into marketing and that. So be prepared. And you always want to use all the tools available. You have ProWriting Aid, you have Fictionary, you have lots and lots of different ones out there. And then you want to get into self-editing. And self-editing, of course, is rereading it, putting it down, walking away, and coming back to it with fresh eyes, reading it out of order, reading it backwards, reading it out loud, sharing it with uh, somebody that has the ability to help you with that. Um, so, But there is a limit on how much self-editing you can do because you really do end up in the woods and you cannot see the trees anymore. And then we have the last one you want to revise again and again and again. So as many revisions as you can do really helps save the time and effort that the editor has to invest there. And last year when I was in New York, before we had this COVID-19, I had the pleasure of meeting Malcolm Gladwell and I asked him what, um, what advice would you share to authors out there? And he basically said, rewrite, rewrite, and rewrite your book. It's never done. So I do want to remind you, he's very successful and this is coming from the top. So again, he feels that his book is never done. I'm sure that the rest of us do the same. So let's compare our editors and what they do. So we have the content editors, which are the big picture, the people who will give you the overall evaluation of how your idea is working and being presented here. Your line editors are looking at the structural, more technical aspects of how well you've done it, and your copy editors are making sure that you've cleaned it all up and you're ready to go into the next phase. So when we have our content editors, the content editor is basically looking at that big picture. Again, uh, we do story coaching, which is for fiction, and that is when you are going to have somebody evaluate the story arc, the scene, the conflict, all of the different small elements. And there's, there's many, there's 37 elements that are being put in there that are telling you, are you using everything to your advantage to convey and engage your writers? And that's what you need to do. If you're in nonfiction, are you motivating? Are you inspiring? Are you educating? Are you engaging the people? Are you using all of the tools that are necessary there? So you might want to do some book coaching there to basically understand how to present yourself and convey the message that you're trying to do there. And lastly, with academic, it's going to be your is substantive edit. It's making sure that any proposal or thesis you put out there is understood and properly uh, supported so that you are taken seriously and all of your ideas are acceptable in the world in which you're trying to, to publish. And that's very important. Line editors are, they are, they smooth everything. They make it all great. They clean it up. They make you sound so professional. They're the ones who deal with your speech, your style, your voice. And I know that as authors, quite often, you are worried about, don't edit out my voice. We're not going to do that. We're going to work. We're going to understand your voice. We're going to make sure that it is consistent, that it's readable, but it's also professional and, and applicable to the um, to your audience because that's very important and they're gonna re remove a lot of unnecessary because we do tend to be very wordy as authors and 
we're going to eliminate some of the overused words, the redundancies, and make it important that you understand that. And in addition, whereas content editing gave you an overall subjective point of view of what is going on with your entire document, line editors are going to also give you feedback. They're going to make in, in lots of suggestions on how you can clean it up and improve. So again, I do love working with line editors and content editors because it is a relationship that you build over time. Copy editors are the final technical review and they come in and you want this because they are neutral, they are about making sure it's right, and they are your personal physical trainer or your personal writing trainer who basically fix your grammar, spelling, punctuation and make sure that you can walk out the door feeling good and confident about what you have done. So on step three, where are you in your editing journey? Because, and what does that mean, the editing journey? So are you still creating the structure, the outline, the developmental phase? Are you there? Are you still in the revising phase? Because if you're in the revision phase, again, we're going back to the line editing. If you're in that structural outline, we're at the point that we are doing the content editing. Are you in the final edit phase? Are you ready to do the last copy edit and send it out into the world? And then again, if you've already formatted it, then you are ready to proof that and you can come in for a final copy or proofread. And that's what you need to do before you take it out or distribute it. And by distributing it, I mean, if you're putting up on a platform, even if it's beta readers, there are just so many people out there in the world. You really, really want to give the best presentation from the beginning so that they don't feel like they're wasting their time or energy. They want to work with people who take this serious. So make sure that you respect their time and investment in you and give them a quality product before they even start. So I believe if you were online yesterday, you would have seen the spiral here. Fictionary uh, is again, they're in the writing and the creating of the book and we work specifically with them. We are the first certified company in the world to uh, provide story coaches and that's helping you work through that high level content, uh, content edit as with a fiction document. Um, and always you wanna be working with pro writing aid because they are there on your emails, your marketing, your book, your, your manuscript, your outlines, your whatever you're doing, your communication, how you communicate with people is so important. And of course, with first editing, we can back you in all those levels to give you a human insight, uh, as we've been referred to again, the professional editing insight of how to make sure that you're not embarrassing yourself and be professional and do that constantly. When you're doing this, who can you trust? For editing well you know that's important there's a lot of people out there who are editing now so let's start with the beginning first you can't trust your mom or your best friend so please don't ask them to edit your book they love you they're going to tell you it's great they're not going to be honest they're not going to be neutral they're not going to be able to give you the feedback the criticism and the critique and the the support that you need to improve yourself it's probably not gonna happen with your teacher or your colleague either because they are not doing this every day. You want somebody whose job is to, to make you better, to improve your manuscript, who wants you to succeed. So you only wanna work with experienced, um, vetted, educated professionals who have years of experience. And that means proven experience. You want to see what they've done. So when you find an editor that you're interested in working with, what can you expect from them? Well your best editor. And again, your best editor may not be my best editor. It may be somebody else's. So you want to be aware of that. They're going to show you their professional work. They're going to be able to share with you their clients. They're going to be able to share with you some of their skills so that you can evaluate that. And I encourage you to always ask for a sample. And some you will pay for it. Others are free. But always try before you buy because again, editing on an 80,000 word book or more or less, whatever, you're still gonna make a heavy investment. You've already invested your time. Do not throw it away. So please make sure that you, you get to see what your editor is capable of. Um, you wanna get references, you wanna see people who are happy or people who aren't so happy, why it didn't work out for them. That's totally fine. Uh, you wanna confirm, they're gonna be able to confirm with you what level of editing that you want. So you wanna to talk to them or write it out or email them, whatever it is, and then have them repeat back what they think is that you're asking for. And so you wanna get that written down 
And then most importantly, when they do that sample, when they do that evaluation for you, we, we do professional uh, critiques and samples at the beginning before we engage with the client. And they're gonna tell you what you need. They're gonna tell you, do you need a content edit? Do you need a copy edit? Do you need a line edit? And they're gonna tell you why and point that out to you. So then you're also gonna determine your editing price up front. Uh, be aware that you know prices vary and you do get what you pay for. So there are editors out there who will charge you thousands and thousands of dollars. There are those who will charge you less than 0 0.01 cents per word on Fiverr. Do not buy on price, buy on confidence that they can provide what you've asked for and what you need and that they've proven their ability to do that. So again, determine that up front and make sure that they can deliver because it does get to be a lot of time. And quite frequently when you're dealing with freelancers out there, they underestimate the amount of time it takes. So they all, they start up and they're working really hard and then they realize that they're putting so many hours into this that they're not gonna make any money and all their motivation goes out the door. So you either end up renegotiating or you end up with a half edited document. So make sure that you have somebody who, who's done this, who has experience and knows what, what investment it takes on their behalf to succeed for your goals. And then also you wanna find out what happens if you find errors because we are dealing with humans here. We are dealing with humans and there are occasionally uh, errors that happen or things that you didn't understand or maybe you think it's an error and it's not. So find out how you're going to resolve those questions and if you have those, how you're gonna communicate and what's gonna to happen to that point. Basically, we offer a satisfaction guarantee and that's by the company as opposed to the editor. So again, that's very important to ask for that. Um, you know, things happen in the world and right now we're dealing with an epi a pandemic. And so people can't always fulfill their obligations. And if they can't, you wanna make sure that you have some kind of guarantee or backup for getting, getting back what you've paid for. So we have an army of editors and we can easily slide that over. But again, find an editor that works for you because that's really a personal decision. So step five, what determines your editing price? Um, that's very important. It's gonna be based upon, as I mentioned, your needs. That's gonna tell you if you need a line, copy, or content edit. And then your writing process, where you are, if you're outlining, if you are revising, or if you're ready to, you think you're ready to pr pr publish. And then also your desires. And we haven't talked about that a lot. So the desires are really based upon what do you want? And I repeat again and again in life, have a plan and work the plan have a plan and work the plan. So decide what it is. Do you want to be a bestseller? Do you want to write a memoir for your family? Do you just want to have your name on a book? Do you want to make a living from selling your books? Do you want to get published? Do you want to uh, validate your expertise? Whatever it may be, you need to discuss that because that affects how your book is written and how your editor works with you. So do you need coaching? Do you want to get story coaching through all of the fiction books that you've done? Do you need a book coach with nonfiction who helps you uh, make sure that you're entertaining or inspiring or motivating people the way that you think you are? And do you need a substantive edit from an academic to make sure that you get in that journal that you are so desperately vying for, that you want to be established in? And as your researcher, you're going to have to do that two, three times a year. So be aware of that. Do you need to finish a thesis or dissertation? So you have the coaching you have a critique, you want an honest, neutral, professional critique that helps you become better. Editing is a learning process. It's symbiotic. We learn from each other, we grow, and it all results in the success of your manuscript. You want a professional revision, again, to outline it there, or maybe you want, you know, some publicity there. So how are you gonna use that? Do you want approval? Do you wanna have somebody who is separate from yourself that says, yes, you are ready to go, you're absolutely prepared to publish, go ahead. And that's those important second set of eyes that we all desire. And then of course the proofread, you know, did it lay out okay, did my book survive the, um, the data change that happened when I uploaded it? So that's very important. When would you start with an editor? And that's important to know because I got that question yesterday. And again, it is up to you in terms of how much editing you want to do. 
and the editors can work with you from the beginning of creating the outline uh, or you might even want to be looking at a, at a ghostwriter. So again, be aware of what that is. But when you have a fully outlined manuscript, you can definitely approach for a content edit. And if you've completed self-editing, then you're absolutely, then you're, you're definitely looking for an editor at this point because it's time to do it. And then I like to talk about when you've just had enough. You can't possibly do or look at this book anymore. You need somebody to take it away from you. You need a break. And that's a good time to have somebody give you some feedback. And quite often I find people are motivated and inspired to continue this epic journey they started of writing a book after they get back some initial consultation with their editor. And then always, 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 before you publicly share or distribute. So again, make sure that you are prepared by, by doing that correctly. And again, what editing services do you actually need? I mean, what are they? What, what determines what you need? The services are based upon your manuscript, where it is in the process, the status. It's based along your needs. Do you have hooks that you use again and again and again? Do you tend to not vary your verbs? Do you switch from point of your uh, verb tense without realizing it? Do you start sentences and not give enough information that we can follow what you're trying to propose here? So again, those are skills that have to be developed over time. And even the best of the best writers always have a coach, always have somebody working with them. What are your goals? And is your book written in a way that is going to achieve those goals? And lastly, really important here that I think is quite often overlooked is what is being recommended from your editor. If the editor doesn't have a recommendation, I probably wouldn't work with them. I think you really need to have somebody that honestly comes forth and tells you what they think and how they do it and they're constructive and they're positive and supportive. But at the same point, um, be careful, make sure that they have the the validation to give you that opinion and that uh, recommendations because everybody has an opinion, but is it right and is it proven? So go with proof in the pudding and make sure that they can show you what they want to do there. Step eight, where can you find assistance or free help before hiring? Well, you can get lots of free help online, again, for writing aid. There are writing groups and beta readers out there galore now. I do like to say be careful because, you know, you want to be strong. You Again, if you have a goal and you have your plans outlined of how you're going to use this book and what your intentions are, that will greatly influence on how you receive different opinions and lots of information out there. So you can get overwhelmed and you might get analysis paralysis. So in, indulge in that, but be careful. Um, limit yourself. It's just like all media. Just limit yourself. You can't take it all in. And then if you really want to learn how to do the editing yourself, absolutely. There are books, blogs, courses online galore. So dig in and enjoy. Why is the professional editing necessary? If you've been using tools and you've used the copy editing and, you know, can't you just skip over this? Well, some people choose to do that. But I think you really need to look at this, that you've already invested your time and your energy and your love into this book. It is now your baby. And so you need to make sure you don't throw away all that time and energy without giving it the final love that it needs. It is your reputation, how you are, you know, your child represents you, you represent you. It, it just you are part of the same family. So your reputation of what you want to do with that book is going to be there. And if you have trouble spelling or um, keeping it clear for the readers, they'll become disengaged and they'll walk away. So you want to make sure that you're building the right reputation from the beginning. And that includes even editing your marketing, your, your blog posts, your, all of it. Anything that's written needs to be edited. It needs to be clarified. And that's why we have these great tools that we use. Uh, use first impression. There's only one. There's only one. So that's yours. And ultimately it is your, it's your best choice to get neutral, professional, uh, experienced and successful editors to help you on your way. So it's about finding somebody that you feel confident working with. So how does editing help you reach your ultimate goals that we've talked about? Well, it's all about becoming, becoming a successfully published author. I love Michelle Obama, got to meet her last year, exactly at this time actually. And uh, she 
she tells us about the book and it's about becoming it's about we are in a constant evolution and as authors and as writers and as researchers and as pre presenters in the world we are using and evolving all the skills that we have so as an editor this is again a give and take it is a learning process and the more you edit or use an editor the more you will learn to self-edit so the first time it is a lot of work but the second and third time it becomes much easier so use the professional editor to tell your story uh, determine what your goals are what is the purpose of writing and make sure you start with that always start with that from the beginning is it to fill, fulfill a life goal are you trying to write a nonfiction where you're inspiring or motivating? Maybe you're doing academic and you're, you're educating. Are you entertaining through a nonfiction book? Find out what it is that your purpose is. And if you can, if you can say that and convey that to your editor, it's going to be such a better relationship and such a better journey together. Become a published author because really now is the time for that. And we have time to do it. So it's going to help you establish your credibility and it's something you do because you love and then if you're again if you're looking to become a full-time author then it's about selling the books and the other services and nobody wants to put out money for low quality so make sure you're, you're dealing with that and when you did professional editing we're going to go through and clarify your voice and make sure that you connect uh, your presentation fluently throughout and you're conveying your story, your ideas, and basically showing that you are a, you're qualified to be in front of them. You are qualified to put these words on the page and you understand what it means to try to engage people. So again, let the professional editor help you there. If you need any help, there's a bundle right now. So I'm sure they'll share that with you later. But again, it's all about finding out what you need and what you want and how it's gonna work. And again, I always recommend editing before you publish and we've been through 35,000 it's more than that now uh, authors in the last decade and we feel pretty confident in being able to say that we've got somebody for everybody but again that's for you to decide it's a very personal connection so I do encourage you to engage with an editor ask for that free sample get involved uh, it's like dating you, you must have a date before you get married. You don't just jump in the first time. You, you make sure that you're prepared to be together. So, hi, Lisa, you're back. Hi, hi, I'm back. We have a lot of questions here. Um, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Everybody's really engaged in everything that you've been saying. So that's really wonderful. Um, I think the thing that we hear most because because of where Pro Rating Aid sits on that journey, we the question that we get most often is, when do they know they're finished self-editing, finished copy editing with our tool, and when do they take it to, you know, a professional who's then going to give them a second pair of eyes? And that's such a hard question to answer, isn't it? How do you know? Well, I mean, as I mentioned, sometimes you're just fed up and <laughs> you're just too tired. And it's kind of like, should you stop driving the car? Or should you keep pushing through? You're not really sure you're going to get to where you're headed. Your destination may not you may not make it there safely or in any really good shape if you keep driving. So sometimes you need to pull over and you can have somebody take over for a while. Doesn't mean you have to start all over, but it's definitely worth getting somebody in there and having you know a review. You can always go for a critique first, a recommendation from the, uh, the editor. They'll be glad to tell you that. And that's something that's, you know, very affordable normally and it also lets you test drive them a little bit when you're ready so that's a very good way to to get involved and to do a sample or to do a recommendation have them do a review yeah i always think that it's once you get to the point where you're not really making big changes you're sort of tinkering that's yeah. when when it's when you're making choices between two things that could both probably be fine then maybe yeah. that's a sign that it's time to send it off to someone else right um, and it's if you want to, you know, some people want to know, you know, can I do this sooner? Uh, you know, is it any good? Well, it's always mm -hmm. good. If you're still having those questions, then start earlier because then you want to get involved when you're still in the structural area of the book, when you're doing that development and you want to make sure that you've got somebody in there because if your goals don't, if your, your writing doesn't match your goals, then it's not gonna pan out the way you like. And you may end up with a book and a story, but is it really, I'm not saying that we, we end up with what we plan, we often don't, but we should have 
uh, a feeling or a sensation of what our purpose was from the beginning. Are we headed in the right direction? Are we headed to true north? Or did we somehow end up going far west and we were way off? <laughs> so Yeah, again. yeah, exactly. Okay, let's go through some of these questions. So a few people sure. were just asking, I'm going to try and put some questions together into mega questions. Um, but yeah. a few people just wanted to get a bit of clarity between um, line editing and some of the other ones. And do they, do they overlap? Do they overlap? Line editing and content editing? Yeah. Do content editors also do line editing? They, do they, are they three separate people? They are, they can overlap. Let's just be clear that a content editor can be good at the technical. However, when you're doing a content edit, when you're doing a story edit, when you're doing this higher level substantive edit, you want them to take away their technical skills and go into the more their creative um, evalu evaluation uh, area. You want them to be able to look at it and say, you know, look, I, I think you're trying to convey this, but this is prohibiting you from achieving that goal, whatever you want to do. So we're not going to spend a lot of time, you know, fixing your grammar and punctuation. They're going to point it out. Yeah. You keep misspelling this word or you keep saying uh, literally, 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 <laughs> whatever it may be, whatever your hook word is that they're going to point that out so that you can learn a little bit, but the goal with the content edit is much higher and it's not, it's not polishing. It's not polishing. Okay. It is fixing. It's getting into the engine. Yeah, so those are two quite different skills. Do, is, does it make mm -hmm. sense to have two different editors do that, ones that work in different ways, or are most editors able to go back and forth between the two? It's really up to you. I think that um, we've had people who come in and they trust their editor so much that once they get that structural, they then want the same person to shine it. And, you know, it really, I want, I don't want to say, no, you can't have that same person because it is your baby and you want to do it. However, if you really want another subjective eyes put on there, you can bring in another editor. What I have found over the years is if you take one manuscript and you hand it to 10 different editors, you're going to get 10 different answers and they're all going to be right. And the problem is, is when you think that somebody's wrong because you didn't do it right because this person says you're wrong. I think we need to be more gentle as editors and say that that's not necessarily wrong. That's just your perspective. And, you know, ultimately it is your manuscript. How do you feel about it? Does this person match you better? So if you want to, absolutely, because you're going to pay for the editing uh, to, to do that. But if you want to uh, have one person, you can normally get the price down when they come back and do that fine polish. And then I would have, you know, have somebody else go through and copy edit. So you can combine those a little bit easier as you yeah, go. Yeah, okay. And I, there's, cause there's quite a few people asking about prices and that sort of thing. Are there when you talk about getting someone to do a sample and try before you buy, what are the, are there some red flags that you should look out for if you're, if you, well, if you think, send it off and get a, get a sample? Well, the sample, if, I mean, uh, the samples are going to be about you saying, do I trust this person? So, you, the, you know, there's basic standards of you're doing track changes and you're talking to them, but you know, are they giving you real uh, advice and feedback that's, you know, they're not just giving you hot air <laughs> to make you feel good. Mm. That's yeah, also, you know, that you is know a red that... flag. Well, yeah, I think okay. saying that something is interesting is one way, but to actually be specific and say, you know, I can see this, but your challenges are laying in your point of view, your verb tense, your uh, descriptions. It seems repetitive. And remember that with the sample, they're not going to, they're not going to be able to do the whole book. They're not going to read it all unless you pay them. But if you give it to them, they will give you a quick glance through it and they can see how it's all organized. They can see, uh, do you know how to format your book and have the chapters and the scenes divided accordingly? Because if not, then you're probably, you're not ready to go into this high level. Uh, you know, you're not going to be able to use the software such as a, a story coach and, and uh, storyteller. But if you work with somebody, they can help you get through that coaching and then get you into the next phase. So it's uh, there's a lot of things that limit us and it can be a budget, time, experience, but mm -hmm. you're going to pay for it one way or the other. And I think you really want to make sure that you go through a learning experience on whoever yeah. you deal yeah, with. So if you feel like you can take their criticism and uh, learn from that and apply it, that's the most important thing you can do. It's just like any book find like this whole presentation. It's too much. 
to be honest. So if you can walk away with one small gold nugget that you apply and it makes your day-to-day -day life better, then it was a success. You can throw you can throw the rest away or you can put it back for another time and come back later. Yeah, yeah, sure. I think it's it should be a partnership, shouldn't it? I mean, you and your editor working together, both trying to understand each other and both trying to bring it to a new mm. a new level, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, there's a couple questions about um, what a, what would be a reasonable price range. You know, you said probably not thousands and probably not fiver. Um, but what is actually a realistic? If you have a good, if you have a draft that's in good shape, and you want someone to, you know, pr do a good solid edit and help you get it to a finished product. There are all ranges, and I'm not going to say it just depends. I'm not going to leave you there. I'm going to ask, I'm going to answer your question. So stick with me here. <clears throat> it's dependent upon the size of the document. So that's always going to be the bottom factor. You cannot get cheap, cheap editing on a really, really large document. Just that's point blank. When you are going to different editors, uh, higher editors who have success or who know their marketing, they charge more you will often find, I think right now, you're going to see a huge influx of people saying, I can edit it for you because they're desperate for work. So you want mm -hmm. to be a little careful there. Uh, you want to see somebody who's been over time. Now we have, we only do professional editing and that's the techniques, the, the um, technical work. So we're not dealing with the publishing houses. We're not making promises we don't keep. Uh, we're getting you ready to present to them. We're getting you ready to self-publish. So we have a conveyor belt of work coming through. So we can keep it, we're on the lower end. We're the most affordable in terms. So if you're doing a copy edit, you're looking at one to two cents per word, a line edit, you know, two to three cents per word and a, a, a content edit, depending if you go into the coaching and that, you know, it's three to five cents a word. Now it would not be impossible. We don't have these charging range normally of six to eight cents per word but that all depends. Now you can also add on things that you want. Maybe you want a consultation with them. Maybe you want to uh, have them do your author bio or your cover letter, those things. And that's something that's advantageous when you work with someone, especially when they know your mm. writing and you have that relationship. But again, the pennies per word, you're looking at on, on the low end at one cents per word. And that's only for those who have steady work who can really go there. Um, but, you know, three to five cents per word is, is where you are, is a, is a good place to start. And then you can always buy the BMW if you want. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I guess it's like anything. You can get mm -hmm. the BMW version or not. Um, Rachel yeah. wants to know, how honest are you with people? If it's clear that a person's writing is unlikely to ever reach a publishable standard, would you tell them? Oh, you're a good question. <laughs> good question, well, Rachel. I think again we come back to their uh, their goal, and you know, is it to is it to publish with a publishing house? Then I think, of course, then you want to talk about that. But is it to self publish and share with your friends, or to use in your work and and to validate yourself as an author? That's a little different. Can are we honest? One hundred percent, absolutely. Are we brutal? No. Do we crush your dreams? Absolutely not. <laughs> Do we encourage you to get better? Yes. Can we show you how? Yeah. No denying it. We can show you how to get better again and again and again. And sometimes that's what it is. You do not learn to walk in a day. It took you a year and it will take you time with writing. So you should not be great out of the door. Your first yeah. draft should stink. I mean, no it should is. be red. It should be bloody throwing it down. And you should be grateful for that because that's, you know, oh, they did it. They tore it apart. They ripped it apart. Don't take that personally. That's great. Now you, now you get to start. That's, yeah. Look yeah, at all the ways yourself. I can make this better. Look at all the room there is to grow. <laughs> Look at how, I mean, I, I yeah. think it's great. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, a couple <laughs> of people, uh, Steve and Bernadette, have asked whether you need to find an editor that um, usually edits books in your own genre. Ideally, yes. You want to have somebody who has uh, who is familiar with that, depending upon your level of editing. Now, if you're doing a content edit, you definitely want them to have some experience in your genre. If you're getting a copy edit, then it's a little bit easier because that's structural. That's just grammar, spelling, punctuation. That's basically understanding how you're using your words and your language. A line edit can be somewhere in between because uh, they can be, a, maybe they're a, a fiction author who has done some tween work and you have a 
eight to 10 year old, that's a little you know, pre-tween. So you're not so far off the market there. Or if you're doing poetry inside that, you know, the more niche you want to get, the harder it is to find. And, you know, go, go to your people. Where's your audience? And yeah. where are the authors who are already doing it? Start there. And who are they using? And or bring it in and talk to the editor and say, this is what I'm looking at. This is what my, my aspiration is. Yeah, well, and do you have just a ton of editors that work for you? Like, do you do, you do some um, blind dating and setting people up according to what they're looking for? Of course, that's the sample. I mean, we do free samples for new clients, no problem. And we assign that specifically according to your genre. And so if you can define to us what you're looking at, we, we have that in the instructions and then we, we get that back to you. So it's important that we, we're honest about that to tell you, okay, yeah, we got somebody over there. And, you know, it's the same like when you go into scientific editing, it, it, it's important you have somebody in that same science. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, a couple of people are asking about the editing voucher that's in the bundle, in the bundle. Mm -hmm. Bubble. <laughs> um, in the bubble. Um, so what do they get if, from you if they get this bundle that gets Pro Writing Aid and Fictionary? And then what do they get from you? You get editing, $200 worth of editing. Come to us, we'll take care of it. <laughs> okay, so it's, okay, it's great. All, all levels, all, you know, if you want to do a higher level, lower level, uh, most people, if you're going to go in and you need to add that on, that's fine. But it is for new clients and we'll still do the free sample for you. So definitely come on in. Cool, so you get 200 worth of editing with that bundle. Okay, yes. answered, answered. <laughs> um, Good till May 5th, so you better move soon. Okay, it's gotta be quick. She's only offering this for a little while. We had to get it to squeeze it. I gotta out. live, I gotta eat. <laughs> it's a scary exactly. world. <laughs> um, okay, so is there, it, does it make sense to get a, a content editor involved before you finished? Like if you're a few chapters in just to get um, a sense of where you're at, does that make sense? I think if you want, uh, that's more of a coaching and consultation. And I think you definitely can. It's, and that would be a content editor. So it is the correct person to contact, but you may not be doing editing at that point. You'll be more structural, you know, book coaching in terms of figuring out, okay, where are you going? What do you want to do with this? And I think that's important because you can walk through that. The same as Christina talked yesterday, you want to make sure you're inserting the, you know, you know where to have your tension, you know where to have your resolution, you know how to build that. And if you've never done that, it's definitely, definitely worth doing that. And the same if you're doing your first nonfiction, that's a, it's a, it's a big, um, big goal. So make sure you've yeah. got somebody who's been down that path before. Yeah, I think it's really valuable if you think of it like a coach. I mean, even Federer has a has a professional mm -hmm. coach, even though he's the best Absolutely. tennis player in the world. You know, there's people that have all these skills and this understanding. And so, yeah. I mean, you might as well use them. You must. In you today's must. Book, absolutely must. Well, they, uh, <laughs> Amazon has flooded the world with so many books. I mean, it, anyone can be an author. Well, but who's reading them, you know? It's about, do you really find your audience? And that's what we want to do is make sure that you connect with the people that you want to, uh, at least technically and, and emotionally and uh, logically the way that you've designed it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Carlito says, what does Malcolm Gladwell mean when he says rewrite? Isn't that a different, isn't that different from editing? You just keep writing again and again, keep writing, keep writing, re because you're constantly re revising, you're constantly redoing that. And uh, he just said, you're, you're never done. It was a brief, you know, a brief meeting, but I, I found it funny, like you ask somebody that general question, what's your, what's your advice? And he's like, you're never done. You just keep yeah. writing. You keep writing again and again and again. Yeah. Well, and, you know, that's the magic of the English language, is the, well, of any language, I guess, is that this, you can say the same thing in infinite ways with infinite mm -hmm. words and infinite vocabulary and you can turn your whole sentence backwards and you can add three sentences together or you can take a giant sentence and you can separate it there's just so many different ways to do it and so mm -hmm. and every time you modify a sentence you're rewriting it and you're trying to make it exactly. better it's, it's i mean that's part of my favorite that's my favorite part of the process that's the magic <laughs> why I, I work where i work <laughs> mm, absolutely um, a uh, couple, so a uh, couple of people just about the bundle again, if they get the bundle now, they don't have to use it immediately. They just need to buy it before the fifth and then they can cash it in. Right. What did, 
is it a one year that they have to cash it in? I believe it's one year. Yeah, it, it'll show up when you're there, and basically you come over. We all have a lot. We'll have a login, so we will have that in our in our database that we have you. So we will set. We're not sending out a coupon to everyone in the world, but we have once we have you signed in the database. When you're ready to redeem that, you simply let us know, and we'll you're there. You're done. Okay. Cool. Okay, there's only 32 questions left. <laughs> <laughs> um, no worries. What are, your thoughts, what are your thoughts on trying to just edit your book yourself? What are you missing out on? You're missing out on fresh eyes. You're missing out on the experience of somebody who's been down the path before you. Uh, if you have not written five books, then you're just not going to have the experience. I mean, you wouldn't go out sailing your first time solo on the open sea. You just don't. You, you, you start in the bay, you get lessons, you learn how to do it, and then you go out at different times and, and, and you, you, push, you push yourself so that you have the skills and the knowledge to, to be able to do that. So again, you can self-edit and you can learn. I mean, absolutely. There's nothing to hold you back. You've got all the time in the world, learn to edit. Absolutely. <laughs> but you will still never have that fresh perspective. Now, the advantage that we have today is that the online, the internet, you can definitely meet with other people and you can discuss your book. You have beta readers. So there's a lot of ways to, to edit without getting a professional editor, but you will invest in editing one way or the other. You will either invest your time, your energy, or your money. And ideally, you, you will always have to, you always have to invest two of those. So it's either going to be your time and your money, your time and your energy, or your, you know, your energy and your time. It, it's just the way it pans out. So it's, and it's not just editing, that's life. It's just that life. is life, yeah. <laughs> well, and I, I mean, every time I send something that I've written to, you know, one of my colleagues, to Haley, who's, who's in the background here, or to anybody, I mean, the things that they point out that, as yeah. soon as they point it out, are so obvious to me. I just think... <laughs> Yeah, oh, we yeah. know all about oh, that. That wasn't I obvious. I to introduce this character. I just suddenly started talking about them or whatever it is. It's so yeah. easy to miss things when you're in it yeah. because you know yeah. what you're trying to say. You know what the point is. You know, you know everything's in your head. And sometimes you just forget to get yeah. it out of your head and yeah. off the page. Um, okay. Um, should a British writer always use a British editor for language and cultural nuances? You need to make sure that they're familiar with British editing. That means they, they need to be absolutely doing. And of course, that's, you know, a British editor who wants to publish in Britain, but there are also British editors who want to be more international in terms of uh, crossing over. So there's, there's that, that is a question on, that we ask all authors, you know, where are you from and what type of English editing do you want? Do you want American? Do you want British? Do you want Canadian? Do you want Australian? You know, because there are differences there. They do not necessarily need to be that nationality, but they definitely need to be highly aware of which voice they're following in. And that also is not just the, uh, the spelling. That's also how, you know, how long are your sentences? How in depth do you describe things? You know, Americans tend to be bullet points, fast, cruel, boom, 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 boom. And Britons, you know, you have this eloquence that is more delayed on how we're going to tell you what we're gonna tell you. And so you get, pulled into that and it's very important that you work with somebody and that again that comes back to the sample if they say they can do it show me show me first because if you're worried about that then do whatever makes you feel good you don't have to bend for the editor you it ultimately is your choice that's right it's your baby mm -hmm. um a couple, a couple people are saying that they already have fictionary and pro writing aid um okay we you can anything send you that you want to offer them <laughs> We do, and I, I <laughs> forgot to put that on the slide, actually. We'll, we will offer a 25% off coupon. So I tell you what, um, we'll, I'll send you my email here, and uh, we can yeah. do that. But I can set it up. I'll set it up for you, and it'll have to be used within a certain amount of time. So I think I said until, oh, I wrote it down. I wrote it down until May 12th, we have a 25% off coupon, and I will just name that PWA. Two okay. five. That's your coupon code. And I'm gonna write two five. Okay. Yeah. You heard it but give me first. ten minutes after this presentation to make sure that's in the system and be kind to my administrator who says what? <laughs> okay, no problem. So uh, everybody will get an email tomorrow anyway from Zoom um, that'll awesome. have 
the, the recording of this. Um, and so I'll include all of the links that we've dropped tonight and I'll include that code um, for anybody who wants that. Oh, um, mm -hmm. and so if you need to get it before the 12th, but then it's valid through when they say? That would be a coupon to make an order before the 12th. So let me, let me hammer through that. We'll put all the details in the email. How's that? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, the code will just be on the website when you make a purchase, I believe. So. Correct. Correct. Okay, good. Denise thinks that we should merge our companies because we all <laughs> work well together. Maybe we should. Maybe all three of us, we should just. I, that was the plan to really, you know, give a full coverage there at the, the book, the London Book Fair. So we're getting there. We yeah. got an e-book. We got an e-book. It's all we there. We got an e We're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I, but that's one of the questions we get all the time at Providing Aid is like, people crossing their arms saying, oh, it's just, this is never going to replace a human editor. And we're like, of course it's not going to replace no, a human no. editor. This is to help your editor. I mean, if you can deliver a really tight manuscript to your editor, they'll be able to do better work for you. And there, it's different skills and it's all part of a process. Right. Well, I mean, we are working together right now. We use ProWritingAid. All of our editors use it absolutely all of them and so we have that and we recommend it and we are definitely a promoter of uh, pro writing aid but also when you're in the uh, plugin or the different browser extensions and things like that you're going to see up in the right hand corner now a little dot that says uh, human editor and then you're going to see this face pop out and <laughs> i'm not your editor but uh, one of my people will be so we got 20 30 people back there who are just waiting and can help you and can do that sample so we are getting there and I think, you know, but it's also good to stick with your strengths. We're not techy people, you know, we, we do that well. So we, we're holding hands in this, in this uh, endeavor. And of course, we're also, as I mentioned, we're the first ones who are story coach certified and uh, I'm really excited about that. So that's a yeah, very that's big deal. Yeah, that's an exciting move as well. So story yeah. coach is a fictionary um, editing Yep. Fiction, the element of, of fictionary. So they've, they're really working together to develop a new qualification program for editors. Exactly. A couple of people have asked about becoming editors and we're running out of time. Sure. And in a moment, people are going to be clapping outside for all the healthcare workers because it's eight oh. o'clock in the UK. And at eight o'clock every Thursday, we all go outside and clap and honk our horns and bang our pots and pans. And so that's going to be Fun. coming up at this window any moment. Um, so I think we're going to have to sign out or sign off um, but I just wanted to let you know that tomorrow, tomorrow we've got another session um, with a business writing professor that's all about um, making your cover letter become a proper story and how can you take the story of your life and put it into your cover letter and then use it for loads of things beyond that. So if anybody is out there looking for jobs or I think it would probably feed into oh, biographies everything. and all kinds <laughs> of things. I mean, how to write the story of your life is amazing. So that's yeah. tomorrow night. So have a look at the link on the blog for the next series. And then they just keep coming hard and fast. Um, we're having a great time meeting up with everybody here. Thank you. To, I recognize oh. it is. So I'm so pleased that so many of you keep coming back. Um, and thank you, Joellen, for being here tonight. I really My appreciate pleasure. it.